Another place that you can capture requirements for your SharePoint workflow is in Microsoft Excel. And Excel is actually a fine tool for capturing lots of information about business processes and business analytics. I'm going to start by creating a new worksheet and I'm going to put in step and a description, the person or team that is in charge of that step. Just widen out my columns a little bit. I want to know if there's a form that's being used at this point and what the name of it is, and then I'll just have a place for some notes. So in our workflow, the first step is that the user fills out the application form. It's the user filling it out, and at this point, normally I would actually ask for two copies of the form. One copy is a blank form, and the other copy is a copy that's been completed so that I can take a look at the kinds of information that go into the form. I'd like to have both of those in a hard copy, and I'm also going to request to have the blank form sent to me electronically. So right now, this is actually called mgrappform.docx. That's the name of it, and I'm just going to write it down here. So I'm tracking it, I'm going to say that John will email form and send hard copies by a particular date. Now, if I'm using SharePoint, I can say, can you scan those and put them up on the SharePoint site? Create a folder for all the documents that I'm going to be using for this workflow. The second step then is email form to Mary, who actually works in the HR department. So let's just say that this is the HR intake person. And for now, we'll call her Mary. And this is because later on, I may wonder what happens when Mary no longer works here because she won the lottery or when Mary's on vacation, who does this instead? So it's the HR intake person. I'm going to kind of drill down into that. And the user is going to do that again. And the form that they're going to send is that same form. By the way, the shortcut for copy the cell above is control and then apostrophe. So we already have that form. And then the third step of my workflow is that Mary determines who needs to approve. Mary's going to do that. There's no form actually being used at this point. So I want to take some notes about this and say how Mary decides. So... If the applicant works in manufacturing, there might be one person. And then if the applicant works in a retail store, there might be a particular rule for who approves it then. And then all other applicants are approved by the director of HR. So let's say if the applicant works in a retail store, then approved by head of sales. And if the applicant works in manufacturing, then that's going to be approved by the plant director. So we're just keeping track of all of this information that we want to have together all in one place. Step four then is to email form to appropriate person. And that's Mary. And so on. So we're going to capture all of this information, including a good set of notes, including knowing what forms we're going to use. If you have a lot of different forms being used in a workflow, this would be a good time to start numbering or lettering them, form A, form B, form C, and so on. Write those same numbers on the hard copies you have. Use those same numbers at the start of the file name when you save these all in a folder. So we're collecting all of this information out of the business. We're making sure we have a great deal of clarity about what it is that we're doing. And best of all, we're saving all of this information here in Microsoft Excel, which is one of the most used programs out of the entire Office suite. So if I want to share this information with other people, it's easy for me to do. And finally, I can take this list here in Excel, publish it as a SharePoint list, and share it very broadly with the folks who are helping me document this workflow before we spend our time putting it together in SharePoint Designer. Excel is an excellent choice of a location to use to document workflows.